Hello everybody, I hope you're sitting comfortably because I'm going to tell you a story. It's a story about a greedy billionaire and then we're going to have a look at why the maths behind this story is crucial for some areas of medical science. So here we go, the greedy billionaire paradox. And we start with some breaking news. Billionaire Jeb Fezos has been caught boasting that he gave workers a pay rise without spending a single penny. Fezos, featured below, is owner of Taxicon, the multinational taxi firm. He was caught by an undercover reporter making these claims earlier this week. And when pressed by the reporter about how this was possible, Fezos replied that he had increased wages by using top secret math. Curious. And this story comes on the back of a series of press releases by Taxicon about pay and conditions, some of which were controversially refuted by a whistleblowing employee. So Taxicon had claimed that the average wages of both of our two teams, the Alpha team and the Beta team, are higher this year than ever before. And they went on to talk about staff well-being. They said, uh, Taxicon workers are happy. In the last year, there has been zero staff turnover. No one has left or joined the organisation. While one employee, who is clearly not happy and whose identity has been protected, blew the whistle and claimed, neither I nor anyone else in the organisation has had a pay increase this year. So this is the paradox. Let's imagine that these three claims have all been independently verified. So they're all true. How is this possible? So this claim about average wages uh, for the Alpha team and for the Beta team, both being higher than ever before is true, uh, but also so is the statement saying that no one in the organisation has had a pay increase. And the statement about staff turnover, that's true too. And this isn't a problem where the boss pays themselves a lot more and that, that kind of brings up the average mean, the mean average. That's not this problem. No one in the organisation has had a pay increase in the last year. The question is, how is this possible? What's going on? So stop the video and have a think. And welcome back. And so individual salaries are not increasing and nobody is leaving or joining the organisation. So the only thing left that could change is the distribution of employees within the two teams, Alpha and Beta. And this is what Jeb Fessels is doing. He has cunningly moved some employees from one team to another and this has increased the mean average salary for both the Alpha team and the Beta team. Now this seems slightly counterintuitive, but it is possible. So let's have a look at the Alpha team. So let's imagine they look like this, so that this is their first employee. Uh, they've got 12 units, the 12 of whatever Taxicon pay their employees in. Uh, and then our second employee, oh, there's our whistleblower on 15. And then our third employee, oh, hello, there we go, on six. And then our fourth employee is here. Oh, well, it is a truly diverse workforce at Taxicon, there we go, on seven. And so if we move them around a bit, we can see that they've got a mean average of 10. And so if I want to move somebody away from this group in order to increase the mean average salary, I'm going to choose somebody who's got a lower than average salary. So I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose this person on the end, bye bye to them. Uh, and you can see then that we've got a little bit left over from that bar to be shared between the three remaining employees and that increases the mean average salary to 11. Um, but what happens when that person then joins the beta team? Well, let's have a look at the beta team. Here they are. You can see why they're the beta team. Um, and they've got a mean average of just three. Um, and for that to increase by taking on a new person, that person that joins the team needs to have a salary that's higher than three, that's higher than that mean average. Um, and uh, we're in luck because our person does. There we go, lots to share between the four remaining employees and that increases the mean average to four. Uh, so it's possible and actually well, all you need is you need to have two groups that have got different mean average salaries to start with and then you've got to choose somebody who has a lower than mean average salary for the group that they're leaving and a higher than mean average salary for the group that they're joining. Um, and then that's it, both teams see their mean average salaries increase, everyone's a winner. Or no one is the winner because no one's salary is actually increasing. Maybe Jeb Pezos is the winner, because he's made it look like he's paying his employees more without actually doing anything at all. And so the greedy billionaire paradox was about some fictional workers 
and bare fictional wages. But back in the real world, this statistical quirk can have some serious consequences, unless we're careful. We can see averages behave like this in data about cancer patients. And so the severity of a cancer is described by its stage, but those stages range from zero to four. And it's been shown that when better diagnostic technologies are introduced, something called stage migration can take place. And this is where there's a shift in the distribution of patients across these stages. And so let's imagine you've got a more effective diagnostic technology. And it could be that some people who before would have been diagnosed with a lower stage cancer, like a localised cancer, are now in fact being found to have a higher stage cancer. And so the distribution of patients across the stages changes. And one study, which is linked to below, found that when some technologies were introduced in the mid 20th century, this stage migration from lower stage to higher stage took place. And as a result of this, the mean average life expectancy of the lower stage group increased, as did the mean average life expectancy of the higher stage group. Now you might be thinking, well, early detection of higher stage cancer is going to lead to better treatment, which is going to lead to better outcomes. But even if you account for this, the average life expectancies were increasing. So they were increasing even when individual outcomes were not changing. Why? Well, the people who would have been diagnosed with a lower stage cancer, who are now being found to have a higher stage cancer, had a lower than mean average life expectancy relative to that group. So when they effectively left, that mean average increased. And similarly, they had a higher than average life expectancy relative to the higher stage group, and so that average increased too. And so this is just like my greedy billionaire paradox. Although this time this isn't being done deliberately by someone in order to mislead us, this is happening inadvertently as a result of better technology. And the story here isn't that there's anything wrong with that. The story is that we need to be aware of the statistical quirk so that when we're looking at data like this, we're making accurate conclusions. And so what started out as a silly story about my made up billionaire turned out to be quite important. But this piece of mathematics isn't named after anything in medical science, or indeed my billionaire, it's named after a comedian and entertainer from the early 20th century, Will Rogers. And so Will Rogers is alleged to have talked about the people who moved from Oklahoma to California during the economic depression of the 1930s. And he is alleged to have said, when the Okies left Oklahoma and moved to California, it raised the IQ of both states. And I think I'm just going to leave that there with you for you to decide exactly what he's saying. He was from Oklahoma, so I think we can take that with a pinch of salt. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. This has been The Greedy Billionaire Paradox.